Welcome. This is for the current energies. We're going to touch upon the new moon, the full moon, details with degrees. So if you have your chart, write the stuff down or listen and find out if these matching degrees are relevant for you. If you don't know that, if you don't know like where you have zero degrees cancer or where you have the 19, 37 degrees of Virgo, 18, 19 degrees of Pisces, these are all degrees and signs that I'm going to be talking about in this reading. These are the upcoming events for March. And then at the end of March, we have some interesting stuff that I'm probably going to touch in on real quick. And it's going to have to do with the planet Saturn and Mars when they actually come together at the end of March and what that's going to look like and feel like. If you're new and you don't know any of this stuff and you want to know, just comment your stuff below, your birth info, and I will hook you up. Okay. Ascendant sign, which is a Capricorn, is the degrees of 1047. And there's a sun sign of 2303 in Pisces. And this person also has their moon sign at 27 degrees. Uh, oh wait, yeah, their moon is 27 degrees of Aries. Uh, I'm loving the equal amounts of earth and water, right? Their ascendant is earth, their fiery moon, right? Whoosh, optimistic, fiery assertive, get up and go eat Aries. And then they've got the laid back Piscean sun, right? At 23 degrees and it's water, it's flexible, it's emotional. It likes sound and music and the strong Capricorn ascendant, the physical body, right? So there's a lot of cardinal energy in this chart for that reason, um, because it's got that fiery Aries moon and it's, this person also has their Venus in Aries at 22 degrees too, by the way. You could be listening for these degrees and listening for these things and to see if there's going to be anything that squares these things or that trines them. I typically talk about the trines and the squares because they're the most obvious events in our life, right? There are all these other little things like sextiles and semi-sextiles and in conjuncts. Those are relevant, but there's only so much time to talk about things and there's only so many ways to keep things where it doesn't get so damn confusing. So let's just go ahead and dip into the all astrology. All right, first up, let's discuss, I'm gonna give you some of the transits that are gonna be occurring in May. So when we start off with March, we are looking at Venus moving into Taurus. So Venus leaves Aries. Aries was all, you know, very optimistic and want, you know, kind of uh, almost spontaneous and just doing things and doesn't think things through necessarily, but really being about self and what I want and what I desire, because that's what Venus is in Aries. Aries is self, right? Looking before leaping, or not looking before leaping. But then it moves into Taurus, okay? And Venus rules Taurus. Venus is about things being beautiful, to love, it's creativity, it's art, it's, it's abundance. It's my money, right? It's also food. It's also anything that is appealing, whether it's aesthetically. Some people, their idea of beauty can simply be keeping their house clean and organized. It's it, this whole beautification. A lot of beauticians have strong Taurus marks in their chart. A lot of singers, vocalists, because Taurus rules the voice. It rules the senses, the five senses. So when we try to understand Venus when she moves into Taurus, well, Venus rules Taurus. So it's super compatible and they're, it, they're symbiotic and it's, they each pretty much mean the same thing. Okay, so if Venus is entering and trining up with something in your chart in Earth, because she's going into Taurus, which is Earth energy, you could be getting some money coming in. All right, so you want to listen for degrees. You want to find out, is this going to be happening to me? March 5th, Venus gets to the zero degrees of Taurus energy. Okay, now at the end of February, I know I'm going backwards a little bit, but there's something that happens that we're feeling already at the end of February. I mentioned it in some other videos, and we're feeling this tightening of the nodals, the node access, the south node and the north node, and Chiron and Aries. Remember, Chiron and Aries is about myself, okay? It is about wounds from my past that, that are deep wounds, that are like soul wounds that we have. And they're coming up to the surface. It's kind of like survival because it's Aries. It's my right to exist. And what do I need to do for myself? And so there's been a lot of information from the universe coming through. It's a time where we need to, each of us, doesn't matter if this is in your personal chart, but as a, as a society, as, as humanity, it is all about learning how how to listen to ourselves, what it is we need. Stop being so overly concerned about how I can fit in. Embrace my individuality. Listen to your heart, all right? Find out what your heart has to say to you, okay? Listen, hear it, have a conversation, respond back. Start a rapport with your heart, right? Chiron being challenged by the nodes, 
means that it stresses us somewhere. Find out where Aries energy is. Six degrees of Aries in your chart right now. That is where Chiron is at. And that is where the nodes are squaring it. The nodes are equally like at six degrees right now, right? So we're finding this stress and tension coming. The nodes are in, the north node is in Cancer. The south node is in Capricorn. So that creates a big T-square. We're noticing that. So for some folks, this can be in areas of your health. For some folks, this can be in areas of how you think, how you communicate. It all depends on your specific chart. If you punch your stuff, comment down below. I can find out for you where that's happening in your life if you don't know and, or if you just want help figuring it out and, and more specific details about it. What we want to do is to really embrace individually who we are and understanding that uniquely we all have gifts that the universe has bestowed upon us. We have these gifts, these things that we innately came in with. That's your south node. Okay, your south node is something that you know so well. Now, this isn't the transiting south node. This is something that occurs when I say your south node, that's what was in your natal chart. So this is specific to you in your birth time, all right? Your birth place, your birth city, your birth state. You punch those things in and that's how we find out where was the north node when you were born, at the time you were born, okay? And then we find out what kind of gifts you came in with, all right? And those Things are things that you've always relayed, relied upon in your life. You've always said, you know what, even if this doesn't work out, I knew I could always go back and do that. Because this was this thing that you didn't have to develop the skill or the craft for it in this lifetime. You came in and you would just know how to do it, whatever that it is for you. Some sort of a craft, some sort of a skill set, some sort of knowledge, depending upon where your north node is located. So at the opposite end of that north node, is the south node. So when you come in in the lifetime, like I'll give you an example, this person's chart, their north node is at seven degrees in Taurus. Their goal then in this life is to achieve their north node. Now, does that mean to achieve their north node like for this entire lifetime? It doesn't have to be like a lifetime achievement thing where you pick up the, you pick up the baton and you say, okay, this is now how I'm gonna be identified for the rest of my life. It doesn't necessarily mean that. It can incorporate that, but it doesn't mean, it just means you kinda of gotta do it at least one, one time, right? Just be like, you'll incorporate it somehow into your life. It doesn't, it's not the end all be all, but the skill sets that you develop down there will be part of this new new you. It is the south node. They don't typically show it on a chart, but all you gotta do is find, for this person, since the north node is in Taurus, they're gonna go to the same degrees, seven degrees in Scorpio, because that's the opposing energy of Taurus, and look at that seven degree mark and be like, oh, that explains why I know how to do that. So for this person, there's, their south node innate knowledge energy is at seven degrees Scorpio in their 10th house. So there is something about their drive and their ambition, but what is Scorpio? Scorpio is like the detective of the Zodiac. They can dig for things behind the scenes, right? They know about the below the surface truths and they are willing to dig for them. They're gonna get to the bottom of this. And so this person would be like an ultimate researcher because that's what Scorpio is. They have an innate knowledge of knowing things behind the scenes, knowing things about folks. They're extremely psychic individuals, but you have, uh, this person also happens to have Neptune there. So for this person connecting to the other side, all that stuff, they also have Mars joining in on this party. So there's can be the, a super, uh, super creative energy. Right, you may you may bring spirit in when you're creating. If you're not creating, because Scorpio is a very creative energy. Scorpio energy is 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 emotions. Recognize emotions is energy. It is a force, and utilizing it, like creating it, to you know refining it, taking taking the stick and creating you know shaping the top of it off where it actually can become a pointed tool like that you can actually use and become sharp become the surgeon's blade so to speak because you got mars there right mars is all about using cutting tools okay a, a carver a sculptor like mars is all about let's do this 
This person has Mars conjunct their mid -own. This person came in this lifetime having this skill set, like an innate knowledge of these things. What they're trying to incorporate is their north node, and that's in Taurus. So it has to do with bringing in what you value into your life. And it like food could definitely be a big thing there. Speaking, singing, it has it's in their fourth house, so it kind of takes on a um, uh, an emotional thing as well. Okay, but more of a nurturing emotional thing because there's lots of different emotions. But this is definitely about things being more stable, more peaceful. These are all Taurus words. Taurus is very steadfast, has great endurance. If they begin a project, they're gonna finish it. So when we talk about bringing in more of the Taurus North Node energy for this person, this would be key, right? Incorporate, like you begin a project, finish the project, right? And maybe working from home or maybe finding yourself able to do more things at home that you weren't doing before. Because where our North Node is, unless we have other things there to support it, we usually resist it. That's the thing about the North. No, we usually resist it because it's not a skill we've developed. We've developed the opposing energy of it. Now, let me give out a birth time, birth date, birthplace, and all that good stuff. This is March 14th. Woohoo! Coming upon a birthday. March 14th, 1967. 3 a.m. is the birth time. And this is Syracuse, New York. Your emotional body. What you have coming up, full moon happens at 1937 Virgo. This is in your eighth house. This is your bonded deep relationships it is also your deep buried emotions okay you have whether you are aware of it or not they're going to be details though they're going to be maybe overly critical things that you you have uh about could be about self but could be about others maybe being self-critical or overly critical to others okay likely if it's buried if it's hidden there might have been things you've said that you don't want to own that you don't want to like you know say hey yeah I did do that you don't want to admit to that's possible it could also be things that you've said to yourself about yourself all right these things are deep though so they could be stuff from past life that you're carrying with you. Is at this full moon, you're gonna have you're gonna have the moon down here, all right? And at the opposite end, you're gonna have the sun and the planet Neptune. Now we have to do a little background uh, information for you. Okay, your sun is 23 degrees Pisces. Okay, so what happens is, or the, yeah, the transiting Neptune, I should say, is coming through. Having the sun in Pisces means that unless you have something a lot of earth in your chart to ground you and stabilize you, it could be very difficult. You do have Capricorn on your ascendant, so this is a blessing. And actually, all the planets going through Capricorn right now have been sending sextiles to your sun. Sextiles, 60 degrees, for people listening. Jupiter right now is at 24 degrees Capricorn. So Jupiter is sending a supportive beam of energy, of grounding, uh, rebuilding foundational energy, okay, not just foundation, but below the foundation, right? Like pipes and stuff, below the foundation. It is, it is supporting you right now in that way, which is good. Now, when Neptune, the planet Neptune transits, for the next five years, it's going to be spending more time getting closer to your natal sun. What you want to do is prepare because our sun is our vitality and our strength. All right. So when Neptune comes along, comes along it actually covers our beams of energy. You might feel sleepy, you might feel sluggish, you might feel run down. This is this is not this is the theme of your chart by the way. I looked up some other issues you've been born with. You have a you have a big T square that lines up with your house of health and some energy up here and some energy down here without getting too astrological for you because I haven't seen any comments or questions from you. But this is to help you to understand that you're 23 degrees sun over here at this end in Pisces and you have a 22 degrees Uranus up here in Virgo in your eighth house, okay? And you also have a 19 degrees Pluto up here in Virgo, which means the full moon's going to happen here right on top of your Pluto. Now, this isn't all doom and gloom. For the full moon, right, March 9th, highly highly empathic time, but likely what you're also going to be receiving is emanations of your own emotional stuff. So it could be really confusing. It's a time when we're feeling what other folks are feeling. We have a knowing, okay, of what they're feeling. We have a knowing of, of all their whole spectrum of emotions. You might need to make sure you set up additional boundaries 
All right. If you do energy work, if you're not familiar with that, just ask me some additional questions. There's things I can help you with or at least point you in a direction if I don't have an answer. All right. I don't have a problem saying I don't know. The full moon energy can make us feel discouraged, especially this one, not just in general, although full moons have a tendency to, to blow up. Right. But because it's on top of your Pluto, it's deep. All right, it's deep emotions. And because it's in Virgo, it's, it could be small things, right? Small things that are really big things. Because for Virgos, anybody who's a Virgo, they know this better than anybody else. But small things do add up to big things because that's what Virgo's beautiful about. Virgo knows that within the whole is not, you know, it's just, yeah, that's so like abstract. What about all the things that make up the whole? You love the way that dish tastes? Well, each beautiful, organic, hand-grown ingredient made that beautiful dish, right? And Virgo understands all the little things that make up that beautiful thing, that beautiful dish. And you do that. But yours is with matters of emotions. Um, it's in deeply bonded relationships. And at this time, well, in your, in your entire life, I should say, it's been squaring it squares up with food somehow in your, in your life, in your health, all right? There's this big T-square involving food. And so it is your, it is, it's unfortunate because you have your son that squares with grains in particular, grains, all right? So this might be food sensitivities, food allergies that you've always lived with. It's below the surface stuff. So it has to do with your digestion, all right? Um, this full moon may elevate that sensitivity to a whole nother level for you. The best thing is to try to keep emotionally calm, to be prepared for the full moon and to understand there are certain people that if I feel their emotions, if I'm already not feeling good, because that's what Neptune by the sun does, it, it, it literally covers up our strength in a way. It covers up our ability to shine, which is our energy. So for some folks, it's simply just a matter of sleeping more. For others, it's a matter of, oh no, I'm feeling ill. It's a full moon. It passes fast. It's not a long-term thing. However, you still have, as always, you were born this way with the sun here, with Pluto and Uranus up here, and you have another thing here in your house of health. So it all comes down to, there could be sensitivities, allergies, I imagine by now in your life, you are, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but if you don't know this, definitely food triggers. There are triggers, right? You got to find out what those are. You'll have to go through troubleshooting, whether it's on your own or being medically tested. I, Miss A knows a crap load about that. If you want to comment and see if she can answer back to help you with that, that's fine. I'm a very individualistic person when it comes to that. And according to this, so would you be. All right. You want to be able to think outside the box. You want to be able to be flexible. You want to be able to understand, okay, I maybe can't use traditional modalities. I may need to be looking towards more holistic things because that's what this is. Organic, self-grown, right? Things that are more about quality, not quantity. This is going to be a big factor. That full moon, I've mentioned it in a million and one videos, but I also need to mention it for you. There's going to be a lower resistance to substances of any kind. I also don't want you to be too discouraged at this time because it will have a tendency to do that. Even though, you know, you've got your moon, thankfully, in Aries, which is beautiful because Aries is optimistic, is forward thinking, it's all about, but I can do this. We can do this. I can do this, you know? And so that is a lovely aspect that you have. And so I'm, I'm, that's wonderful. You'll carry that full, that bright, optimistic, emotional calibration with you for the rest of this life. And use that to your advantage. When you have a fiery moon, moon is our emotions. So when you can get bubbling waters, because emotions are waters, when you can get those moving right? What do we do when we add flame to water? It starts to boil and bubble and stuff happens. This is a powerful energy for intentions. So let's get to your new moon intention. The new moon is at four degrees Aries. Aries energy. You have a, your natal, right? You understand the connection. This is important. This comes down to your health and well-being. This comes down to setting up intentions because it's in Aries. 
for all of us, the full moon is at four degrees, the, the new moon's at four degrees Aries. By the way, the date of that is the 24th of March. So you want to wait no more than one day, like on the 25th, to set your new moon intentions. And what are new moon intentions? It's demanding of writing out your wishes. If you need more information, just comment and I'll let you know. I'll, I'll give you more detailed, specific information on that for you personally. But it's going to have to change your thinking, okay? Because you, this is what it's about, changing the way I think about myself. This is a big thing. Not that you're negative necessarily at all. Like you have your Venus in Aries, right? But when you have Venus in Aries, just so you know, it means my body should look a certain way it, or I can't love myself. That's what Venus in Aries is, right? Like it's very, it can be very juvenile because the Aryan energy doesn't typically, it's a fine wine energy, all right? And a fine wine takes a long period of time to develop, to age, and the older it gets, the better it is. The more developed it is, right? The more layers of flavor. And that's what Venus and Aries is. It takes time, right? And, and so you're coming upon that now. But what you're going to try and do is more to fine tune that. Fine, like literally fine tune means the minute you hear yourself having a negative self thought, you're going to grab it and say, ah, ah, ah. No, we're not. And so everyone is different. You know, maybe you write stuff down. Maybe you verbally speak things. This is, you know, this is, this is self-work. It's homework. This is what the new moon intention is going to be. Being optimistic, moving forward in matters of self, matters of health, matters of who is this, you know, who am I going forward? Because going forward, you recently had the moon's nodes sitting on your ascendant and your descendant, which means relationships, means my home which means my significant partnerships. This could affect it work as well, okay? But definitely home and work are big factors here. So relationships in the home, relationships at work, right? Relationship with myself, okay? It's all connected. It is all connected for you. You've had a lot, you've, you've, had, you've had some challenging stuff going on. And I know right now, because you have things squaring your 27 degree Aries moon, you know, like Saturn is exactly squaring it. So when I say you've got this optimistic moon, you do. But recognize Saturn's been messing with you, okay? And so if you feel like there's been this gray cloud over your head following you around, you're right. There has. And it's not going to stay there forever. It's not, I promise you. Let me tell you a little bit about what Saturn's going to do, okay? So that it'll help you to understand her cycle because she's going to get off of your moon. She's going to stop squaring it. She's going to travel. She's going to literally go into the Aquarian energy. And when she gets there, she stays in Aquarius energy for a little bit of time. Okay, so once that happens, she will no longer be feeling the same way. She won't be affecting you. Like the negativity will lessen. Saturn's grip on you will not be so tight. That's good news. However, I want you to be prepared for when Saturn retrogrades. She goes backwards, okay? So March 23rd, Saturn goes ahead and gets into the Aquarian energy. She goes to 157 Aquarius. And at that time, once she gets to 157 Aquarius, she goes backwards all the way to 25 degrees Capricorn. Now, this is important for you to know. So that means for the rest of 2020, roughly, Saturn aspecting the later cardinal degrees, okay? And cardinal degrees, again, are Aries, are Libra, are Cancer, and Capricorn. Now, your Jupiter is at 24 degrees in Cancer. So that, that where sometimes you just had luck and you just felt like you had like angel wings around you at certain times in your life. And so lately it's been feeling like, where did all that go? It's still there. And once we get Saturn out of Capricorn for good and moving along, it's going to be better. Okay, so Saturn goes ahead and she gets away from your Capricorn stuff, which is important, all right, because it won't be squaring your moon any longer. Saturn is going to go backwards on May 11th. Okay, she goes backwards and she re-enters the sign of Capricorn when it when she gets to July. All right. When July comes around, the beginning of July, you're gonna be feeling the effects of her because she'll be at 29 degrees. All right, which means 29 degrees Capricorn is literally two degrees away from an exact square to your moon. All right. 
Now, this is just a heads up so that you know how to prepare for that time, okay? Doesn't mean the world's going to end, all right? Doesn't mean your world is going to end. But what it does mean is that you have additional support in reality. Like I kept hearing support, support, support. And I'm going to look at your chart. And yes, your natal Saturn is in Aries at one degree. So when Saturn pulls up into the Aquarian energy at one degree, all of a sudden you're feeling a little bit more normal. You're feeling like things aren't so tight. You're feeling a little relief in the body with your body. You're feeling even in the things that you value, you, 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 you don't feel so negative right? You're feeling a little bit of a relief. But what happens is because she goes backwards, it's area, it's air, it has to, it represents your thinking, okay? And that's why Saturn goes backwards. It goes to retest you again, because we get to the point where we say, okay, I took care of that. I am a positive thinker. I am an optimistic thinker. I did change the way I think about this. I did change the way I think about that. But then what Saturn does is she backs up and she tests it. She says, okay, if you did that, let's see, right? So bottom line, Saturn will be back. And she actually, like I said, goes back to all the way 25 degrees Capricorn. And then she goes forward again. And it's going to feel tight, honestly. You know, as, as August comes around, um, hopefully you get a little bit more acclimated and you're more used to it. But it's in a, you know, she's at 27 degrees then, which means that's a degree that matches your moon. So it's emotions. Okay. Recognize that. Luckily, like I said, you have your moon in Aries, but remember, this is how you think, okay? And so you don't want to be getting into um, arguments with people in the government or at work because your Capricorn energy represents government and work, but it's really about yourself and how you operate in those places, okay? Um, but the relief will come again when we have the end of January, I'm sorry, the end of December, I should say. At the end of December, Saturn then goes back into the Aquarian energy. But this time, she goes with Jupiter, hand in hand. And that is lovely. Saturn and Jupiter are together. And they send a nice beneficial sextile, 60 degrees, to your natal Saturn in Aries. And that is lovely. That is like, thank you. I almost feel normal. Right. I do want to give you one last piece of information, and that is that at the end of March, I don't mean to go backwards, but that's kind of, I had to give you like some optimistic stuff. Even though this is a long time, but this is going on, you know, you're not alone. We're all going through this. Um, it's a matter of Saturn is restructuring what our life is going to be moving forward. And it's not until the end of the 2020 that Saturn gets more of in a place of, all right, now it's time to build our foundation. You get it? We're still figuring out, do I want to live there? Do I want to live there? Where do I want to do this? Where, you know, and so, so 2020 is like a trouble crapshoot. I shouldn't say crapshoot, but it's troubleshooting. It's an experimental phase. As long as you treat it as that, as such, you're going to be okay. And realize it's an, ex, you know, it's experimental, meaning, meaning if you know anything about a little bit of science, there's no such thing as a, as a failure. There's no failure to experiment. It's like, okay, that didn't work. So we're gonna try this. That's what experiments are all about. Once we get to the butt end of March, I want you to keep your eyes and your ears alert, okay? Because Mars and Saturn go hand in hand on top of each other. And this could be, it's a fast time, but it's, it's an important time to talk about for people. And for you, it's, it, it has to do with yourself, but it's in um, your Capricorn energy and it lines, up, it lines up with your moon. So it's a challenge to your moon. So it's, it's not just the full moon thing. It's like, oh God, I already dealt with that one thing. And now all of a sudden Mars and, and Saturn are together. What they do is they make you very irritable. Okay, very irritable. And it's going to be like people who are considered neighbors or social media, um, could even be some children that are irritating the piss out of you that you have less patience with. No, understand this fast transit. All right. It's literally Mars and Saturn together. Uh, for people listening, it's the March 27th, March 28th, March 29th. I would even put March 26th in there. 26, 27, 28th, 29th. Be aware of your irritability. Be aware of having a lot less patience and feeling frustrated. Be aware of feeling like, you know, there's all these limitations and it's a matter of, oh my God, I just kind of like, I'm beating my head against the wall. I'm not getting anywhere. Just chill, okay? It's gonna pass. 
right? It's going to pass. This is, Mars is so strong, right? And if it fuels, if it's squaring your moon, um, it is a great time to take that energy and do something with it. Recognize this is all about having disciplined energy. I have those words written down, disciplined energy, disciplined thoughts, disciplined ways in which you communicate your thoughts. So anytime I've mentioned in this reading for you, the way you think, realize it's also the way you speak, okay? Because it's all in your third house that I've been talking about. The way you relate to folks, the way you relate with yourself is a big deal. There's talks and conversations you have that nobody else hears, right? It's a matter of reprogramming. There's old programming and we're getting rid of all of it, okay? So I hope this helps. I hope this has put some light upon your path. Bye.